Hello everyone and welcome back to Frontier Pilot Simulator where I'm going to try and get beyond a tutorial island this time and really see what this game has to offer. Uh, but I encountered a little bit of a problem initially because it didn't keep my calibration settings. It kept the key mappings and axis mappings for the joystick but not that part where I adjusted um, its range and dead zone and stuff like that. So here I'm going back and calibrating it had uh, decided to reset all of that so that's an interesting bit of a problem and uh, I hope that it is able to retain those settings in the future because uh, as long as the settings are correct I can fly it reasonably well uh, well at least this one uh, we are going to aim to get a new ship that's gonna cost 10,000 bucks here and I'm just doing a little bit of trading you can see I've I've sort of got the hang of landing. Well, it's not as horrible as it used to be, let's put it that way. This particular aircraft cannot make it to the mainland and the ship that we're going to get will be able to. I decide to pick up some water for the first time. I've been itching to try and deliver some water in this game and finally we had upgraded the engines on this one and I also now had the funds to do some uh, serious deliveries. Basically anything that is for sale on this tutorial island I can now pick up and sell. Uh, there's a delivery of colonial rations which is a particularly lucrative thing to trade and with that I get my 10,000 funds and head to the hangar. Now it's a little bit of a questionable decision to immediately get the new ship. I only have a buffer of $1,271 and that's not enough to get all of the trade goods, just um, the cheaper ones. Anyway, this is the new ship, and you can see 4,500 charge in the upper left-hand corner there. Uh, it can go up to 5,000 charge, which is a lot, but it's also a lot heavier. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see it's 17.4 tons right now. And so, uh, well, it guzzles up a lot more charge because of that. Anyway, uh, we do seem to have a mission already to uh, deliver the passenger to the mainland but I decided to get a little bit of experience trying to fly this thing and also I wanted to get some more money before we head to the mainland. In retrospect I should have gotten a lot more money. Now you could see how the wind was affecting the craft and it's I would say much more pronounced with this one than the other one actually. Um, and one other thing the fact that the engines are mounted outboard uh, means that they're much easier to damage. So if you knock stuff, chances are the engines are gonna get knocked. As opposed to the previous the um, starter ship, if you will, where the engines are placed closer to the body and we have wingtips. And so the engines very rarely got damaged in that case. Uh, here the engines go out all the time. Okay, so here I am. The, I did a quick passenger mission and from Bora here I decide to make my way to the mainland. That's not a particularly good decision because Bora is as far away from the mainland as any point on this island. So I'm going to be taking more charge than I otherwise would have. The way the engines tilt is quite fancy, I have to say. And you can actually see them automatically uh, trying to save lives tilt a little bit in, uh, in response to the wind and all. So, yeah, uh, it's quite satisfying in that respect. There is an airplane mode, which I just activated. And so we are no longer in VTOL mode. And now we're acting like an airplane, which hopefully will give us better efficiency. Because really with uh, our mass, the 5000 charge doesn't last that long in VTOL mode. So I try and get high up. And we do go faster when we go high up. Uh, we get some benefit from the winds depending on the on the prevailing weather of course and whether it's a headwind or a tailwind but as you can see I'm down to less than one third of my charge with uh, about a third left to go to my destination the total distance was a hundred kilometers I'm assuming K means kilometers and yeah here I am down to 400 or so charge with uh, I'm, and I'm using the I guess you could say potential energy from being high up to try and get there but I find out on reaching the destination that it is an oil rig sort of platform and that's not really the easiest thing to land on of course uh, it doesn't have all of the 
taxiways that I usually make use of in order to land safely at the bases on the tutorial island. And so I have to try and hit this platform and I'm eyeing the diminishing electric charge. Oh, I, I shouldn't say electric charge. I don't know what kind of charge that is, actually. Whatever it is, it actually takes up some mass because my mass goes down as the charge goes down. So, uh, this is going badly and I'm gonna die. Which is a shame we got all the way out here. So the question is, when you crash into this thing, where do you go? Uh, do you go back to the tutorial island and start over from there? Well, no. Actually, you go to the nearest um, spaceport, the nearest place where you would be able to pick up a new ship, and that happens to be on the mainland, so I don't have to make the trip again. And the trip doesn't take that long, though. Uh, none of the journeys in this game take particularly long. Okay, so I get a new ship, but it takes a huge chunk out of my funds. Uh, the ship replacement for this ship costs about 2000 I'd say. A little bit less than 2000 So it's a very expensive replacement, and right now it doesn't seem like I could afford it again. I've got 822 there. Uh, so they want me to travel to a particular destination on this mainland. Uh, we'll call it a continent, even though it's uh, size-wise it's still sort of islandish. You can see the spiky terrain, which is... Basically why they need craft like this in order to deliver goods from place to place. Obviously trucking would not work here. And that is the map. Uh, certainly bigger than the tutorial island. Though, uh, I, I've been mostly in the northwest corner so far. And I don't know if the terrain varies much more than what we see here. Hopefully there is some variety. I haven't traveled around that much. But I need to fulfill what they were asking me to fulfill and get started on this new land. And let's see. So it asks me to fly to a particular location. The craft is much heavier than the starter craft. And so it doesn't go up quite as fast. It feels a bit sluggish, I have to say. I expect the bigger cargo ships that we eventually get will feel even more sluggish. But at least it does have the airplane mode. And that's reasonably fun, though range is always a, a worry. I'm always worried about whether I'm going to get there, and I don't have any math. I mean, they give me a lot of numbers. I've got a lot of numbers in front of me, but I'm not. Oh, I don't know the math of how to calculate. Well, should I throttle down, right? I mean, should I be going full throttle all the way to my destination, or should I be trying to go for a cruising speed, an optimal cruising speed? I don't know. And so, and of course. The effect of the wind is there, so I often don't know whether I, I have enough charge to get to a destination. And I would like to learn how to figure that out. And so here we are landing safely. So at least handling wise, I'm okay with this new craft. It didn't take any special effort to transition from one to the other in that respect, even though it's a little bit more cumbersome. Okay, so... I need to place a geoscanners, geological beacons, and they need me to pick it up. They didn't have the beacon or geoscanner at the trading post. They have it on this platform off to the side, annoyingly enough, so I have to make another trip uh, to grab the beacon over here, load it into the cargo bay, and then plop it down on the terrain where they want it. And they've got five beacons, and I think they promised to pay $20,000, or funds, or credits, whatever you want to call it. And that is our first mission here. And since a lot of the trade goods here cost a lot, I can't buy any of the trade goods. I think that there might have been one that I could buy with the money that I had left after crashing into that uh, platform in the sea. Right now, with 304, I definitely can't buy anything. So I have to do this mission. Okay, so we got the scanner in the hold, and they want me to uh, set it down about five kilometers away. So off we go. You might have already noticed spouts on this continent, and at the bases, the spouts are used to provide geopower, and so you'll see spinning blade things at the bases that are used to harness the, the stuff that's coming out of vents. But those are dangerous, as I will also show you soon. Yeah, there's a lot of dangerous phenomena 
on this particular continent. It is more difficult to fly, it feels like. But here I am, arriving at where they want the first beacon. This one was easy enough. But notice that my charge is down to about halfway. As we try and make a nice soft landing here. And again, the damage is real. And with the engines outboard, it's very, very touchy. If you knock the engines, you will lose an engine. And it's very hard to get this off the ground even with just one engine gone. Doesn't have much margin on that. Okay, there we go. We plop that. And they are receiving data from the scanner. And so off we go to the next place that we need to pick up a scanner. Which is thirty more than 30 kilometers away. Now, I only have 2,000 electric charge here. Now, I figured, okay, I was basically able to make 100 kilometers... Uh, with 5,000 charge, right? I crashed, but I was able to cover that ground. Uh, so 2,000 charge, would it be able to get me 30 kilometers? It seemed like it, but here we encountered reality of the situation. And the reality is that veto mode takes a lot of extra energy, and winds complicate matters. And I really don't want to fly into the vent at this base. And you can see the spinning blade thing that is capturing the energy from that vent. I figure they, it should spin faster when the vent actually spouts. But anyway, I end up losing electric charge and exploding. So now we find out what happens when you don't have enough money for a new ship, which I don't. I do not have enough money to replace it, but... It decides to give it to me on credit. You can see negative $1,596 there. So, okay, we can get the ship on credit. And since they're promising to pay us $20,000 for this mission, I guess it's alright. Uh, I wish after the first beacon they had just given us part of the money. You know, if we had gotten $4,000 per beacon, that would have been not only fair, but it would have kept us out of the red, so... That would have been nice of them, but apparently that's not how it works around here. You have to do all five beacons. And so here I am picking up the next one and going out to deliver it. But the negative amount in my account does verify that there is a challenge to this, and that's good. Because I wanted to see that there was a challenge on this mainland, and it sure seems challenging. No question about that. I don't know what the next step is. I mean, is there another ship? Uh, what is the what am I aiming towards is not particularly clear right now, but at least trying to fulfill this mission is a thing, and also maybe becoming solvent again would be a good idea. Now this second beacon was heavier, and by the way, anything that looks like it's collidable is collidable in this game. <laughs> so you see me knocking into that rock there, uh, and that hurt my chassis, and so that has an effect. So yeah. Things are collidable, if they look collidable. They've done a good job overall in making it challenging. Uh, but this beacon was much heavier, you know, so it brought my total mass to 20,000, so that made the whole thing much more cumbersome. So next I have to pick up a new scanner at the Livermarium, Livermarium drill site. Livermarium, I guess, is our... I don't know if it is our unobtainium in this game, but close enough. It sounds like it. But I figure I don't have enough charge to get all the way to that drill site, so I head back for the base that I was at before. I'm more familiar with it. I've crashed into it. You know, it's home. If you've crashed into it, it's basically home. Uh, so here I am maneuvering. And this time at least, maybe I can set it down safely without any drama. And refuel. So that brings up another question. Can we refuel when we are negative in funds? And as we back up into the parking space, and if it wasn't clear before, uh, you can stop when it's yellow. As long as you come to a complete stop, it'll turn green and you can access the, the interface. But I just wanted to get it in there. And yes, you can recharge. So no problems there. And uh, I go in for repairs to check if I can repair that smoking engine right there. And yes, I can do repairs even though I'm in negative territory as far as my funds are concerned. 
So that's good and makes sense because after all they they want pilots to be able to do these missions. They they can give us a little bit of leeway maybe. I don't know uh, to some extent. But anyway, on a way out, I uh, I did not notice that particular vent that you see there right now spouting gray black whatever it is and it knocks out my battery basically and so now I have an energy leak and also knocks out two of my engines and also gyro stabilizers so I'm pretty much wounded and decided to head back to the base that I was already at in order to get more repairs and get deeper into debt it's the way of things apparently but the possibility of actually reaching safely is dubious right now because with two engines out even at full thrust it's not really slowing my descent down very well and I end up coming too close to this other spout and that pretty much kills me. I, uh, I thought I had made my way around it, not that I had too much control but in the end it got me, I guess that's not far enough away from one of those so basically I have to e eject now so time to eject self-destruction this little pod is wonderful by the way if you haven't noticed already goes as like um, two-thirds of the thrust of our main ship and it doesn't seem to deplete of electric charge no matter how far you go so I wish I had that technology on my cargo ship anyway I proceed I do wish there was more variation to the landscape um, obviously the landscape is exciting in uh, its spiky way, but yeah, some some different textures, certainly in different parts of the island, might be welcome. Another qualm I have is just not being able to control the camera, and a lot of my issues, well not that one, that one was just negligence, but again, if you bump into things, uh, they will kill you. Uh, but. It would probably save a lot of the damage that I've received if I could just turn the camera occasionally and tilt it one way or another. So that's a frustration. So I went in for repairs and then I recharged here and then I was off trying to grab the geoscanner. And it was just lying right there. You can see the little box there. That's where I need to go. So I tried to taxi to it. But that little, I guess, lamppost? Kill that engine. Well, actually, it's not the engine's not completely dead yet. It's just halfway dead. But I hit it again, and now that engine is on fire. So great. And to make matters worse, uh, trying to back up into this crate isn't so easy, especially since the camera decided to zoom out. But I'm not entirely sure what I hit there. I think it's that that uh, array. Lamp array, I guess? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, without being able to see the cargo, I was able to put it into the hold. But now I have one engine out and flaming. And the cargo is sufficiently heavy that I can't get off the ground. I tried to throttle up and I ended up in this pit, knocked out another engine at this point, And I couldn't back out of it. So I was stuck, and even if I eject right now, it's a rather a problem because the geoscanner is going to remain in this place. And this place is obviously very hard to get in and out of without damaging those engines at the very extremities of your vessel. So I'm in a hole financially and in a hole literally as far as the mission is concerned. I'm somewhat thinking that maybe I should start a new save. Uh, by the way, you can under the profiles thing in the main menu. And maybe just start fresh because I've made some serious mistakes. I've gotten the hang of it now. I think I can do better. I should probably come to this island with a little bit more by way of funds and do some trading on this island before taking on this geoscanner mission. This geoscanner mission, while the first one was easy, the second one was alright. Um, I think they're going to get harder and there's so, sort of somewhat of a challenge. Here I am trying to go the other way uh, but that's not going to work and yeah that stuff is in the way so yeah yeah it is a challenge and it'll, it'll take me some time. 
if if there's an even bigger ship, I can envision even more challenges. So it should be some fun. But I just wanted to give you more an idea of the gameplay here as we have reached the mainland and what is the the main part of the game, if you will, rather than just a tutorial island. Okay. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.